How's it going everybody? Remy Sovereign here from RemySovereign.com. Today I have a little presentation that I'm going to be sharing with all of you today and it's about what is an annular tear. So on today's agenda, what we'll be covering today is what is an annular tear? What are the causes or what causes an annular tear to occur? Can an annular tear cause pain? And if so, how does an annular tear cause pain? And can an annular tear heal? And if so, how does an annular tear heal? So we'll go into specific details regarding each of these little topics as we move on throughout this presentation today. But to begin, what is an annular tear? An annular tear is simply any type of tear or cut that occurs on the annulus of a spinal disc. And essentially there are three types of tears. So we could have the rim lesion or peripheral tear. We have a concentric or circumferential tear. And we have a radial or radiating tear. So I'll get into specific details about what each of these tears mean and what they look like from a visual perspective as we move on throughout the next few slides. But before we get into that, we'll talk about some of the causes of an annular tear and what causes an annular tear to occur. So what causes an annular tear? We looked at poor spinal positions with or without load. We looked to repeated spinal movements, flexion, twisting, extension. So someone may perform repeated sit-ups over time, which can stress the posterior annulus of our spinal disc and may cause these annular tears to occur. We could also look at poor spinal disc nutrition. So we could look to someone that's a chronic smoker, or someone that does not consume a healthy diet. That could maybe contribute to less nutrients, less blood flow getting to our spinal discs and may make someone more susceptible to an annular tear. But moving on to our next slide, and what we have here is just different stages of spinal disc damage occurring. But what we see is there's a number of annular tears occurring on the annulus, and that's a result in what these representation of these red arrows are pointing to. As we can see, they're pointing to different cuts and tears on the annulus. But if we look specifically to the bottom now, we could look at rim lesions occurring. We have rim lesion tears occurring, which essentially is just a tear that's occurring on the outer portion of the annulus. And as you can see, the annulus, the outer portion is essentially ripped apart and it's created an opening. And then if we get in, move into a disc extrusion, if we, we can see there's a complete cut or tear of the annulus, which is allowing for that nucleus to bulge out in the case of a disc extrusion or a disc sequestration. So moving on to the next slide, what we have is just a normal disc here which we see our annulus and we see the nucleus in the center and then we have the inner and outer portion of the annulus and if we were to induce a rim lesion tear which essentially is a horizontal tear that is occurring on the outer portion of the annulus and is caused by something like mechanical stress or some sort of traumatic event or a traumatic activity and it's often associated with small osteophyte formation or bone spurs on our vertebral end plates or facet joints um, Essentially, it's just a horizontal tear occurring on the outer portion of the annulus. And we can see from the sagittal view here, just a different kind of visual perspective, just a horizontal tear occurring on that outer portion. Uh, but then we can look to a concentric tear, which is, or a circumferential tear, which is kind of a tear that occurs in a circular motion. And what ends up happening is the layers of the annulus are essentially splitting apart between the lamellae. And the lamellae are essentially losing their adhesion to stick together. And therefore, we get that tear or splitting of the annulus occurring and this is often a result of terizin or twisting activities if you think of golf or hockey these types of uh, constant twisting motions are what's going to cause that splitting of the annulus layers causing them to split apart then we look to a radial tear which essentially is a type of tear that is occurring and starting at the nucleus or the inner portion of the annulus there and then is tearing outwards and essentially as these radial tears accumulate that nucleus material can then bulge or protrude outwards into that space that has been torn and then we, that can result in a contained herniation and eventually if we get a complete tear from the inner to the outer portion of the annulus essentially we'd get a non-contained herniation which is where which is if the nucleus were to bulge outwards and then it could potentially maybe hit a nerve root and cause something like sciatica to occur so then the radial tear just at the bottom just different kind of the sagittal view representation but as a result of these tears occurring, what we know within our spinal discs is that we have inflammatory markers. But as a result of these tears, in theory, we may get more inflammatory markers or cytokines accumulating. This is a result of there being damage or these tears occurring. So these cytokines, we have IL-6, tumor necrosis factor alpha, which as these accumulate, what could happen is that they could, if they accumulate and move towards the outer portion of the annulus, they could interact with various pain receptors or nociceptors, which are located on the outer portion of the annulus of our spinal disc. And as a result of this, 
if there's enough inflammatory markers and pain receptors, it can maybe cause some irritation, chemical irritation to occur, and it may trigger some sort of pain response, which the nose receptors will kind of relay back to the brain. Uh, essentially, what that ends up happening is those nose receptors are connected to our nerve, and they will transmit that signal back to the brain, and an individual may experience a flare-up or pain as a result of these inflammatory markers accumulating at that posterior aspect. So those inflammatory markers may accumulate, as those inflammatory markers may accumulate, if they may be moved to the outer portion of the annulus or they accumulate in that outer portion of the annulus, they could cause pain to accumulate. But we could also get uh, a biomechanical type pain occurring as well. So as we get these tears occurring, what ends up happening is that since our spinal discs, they act as a way to kind of withstand load. If there's disruptions in the nucleus as a result of something like a radial tear, we would kind of lose that ability to withstand load efficiently. And what ends up happening, or what could end up happening is that now that compression of force can be move to the posterior aspect of our annulus we're getting more stress placed on that maybe that posterior aspect of the annulus which can cause more stress or compression onto those nose receptors or pain receptors which may trigger a pain response as well so we can see the physiological perspective as accumulation of these inflammatory markers but then we can also see the biomechanical perspective that may cause pain as a result of maybe more compression or stress placed on that posterior aspect of the annulus as a result of our ability uh, to kind of with stand or with take load efficiently as a result of disruptions within the nucleus. And so now what I have here is pain, which an individual may experience, but I have it with a question mark because not every individual may experience pain. And it's kind of a funny thing because some individuals may have annular tears and experience pain, whereas some individuals may have no annular tears and experience, and they may experience no pain at all. And it's kind of the million dollar question as to why. And so there could be a number of factors as to why, but just to kind of give you one example, we could look to genetics. It could depend on the number of pain receptors an individual has in a certain area, and maybe the number of inflammatory markers that are accumulating in a specific area as well, uh, which may influence if an individual will experience pain or not. So that's just something to consider, and it's why sometimes, and it's why maybe one individual experience pain and why another individual may not experience pain, but there still obviously needs to be a lot of research, and it's kind of an unknown question as to why to date. But moving on to the next slide, what we could see here is we could have a rim lesion tear, we could have a concentric tear, and we could have a radial tear, which could all essentially merge together if they all occur in the same area. And then we have a complete tear of the annulus, and we have a, essentially have an opening where the nucleus can essentially protrude outwards and cause a non-contained herniation. And then it can maybe, that nucleus material can hit maybe a, a nerve root in that localized region and cause someone severe pain. And essentially, if we look at healing, now, with regards to healing, how healing would occur is our body essentially would engage in neovascularization, which we're laying down new blood vessels to the damaged area, which we have those tears occurring, specifically on the peripheral region where that rim lesion tears. So as we lay down more blood vessels, we get new, more nutrients to that damaged area. And essentially, we will lay down scar tissue. So some sort of scar tissue will form and it'll act as a plug to kind of close that damaged area or that opening, which will prevent the nucleus from leaking out and it will prevent maybe that nerve pain from occurring. But the important consideration here is it could take a very long time for healing to occur. And the reason being is because our spinal discs get nutrients across our vertebral end plates and through blood vessels on the peripheral region of our spinal disc. So there's no blood vessels going directly into the nucleus or directly into the inner portion of the annulus. So priority is going to be given to the outer portion of the annulus. So that's why we get that scar tissue forming on that kind of the, more of the outer portion there. And so we may not actually get full healing of some of those tears more towards the inside of the annulus or just may take a very long time to occur. You know, essentially we just have healing as a result of the scar tissue being laid down. But just in my next slide here, however, we may not get full healing or it may take a very long time for healing to occur since there is very blood supply like I just mentioned in the previous slide. And also uh, the area that is injured may also be more susceptible to injury in the future, uh, which is why people may experience flare-ups. So as a result of that, we may not actually get full healing within that area, full or complete healing. So maybe when an individual gets back to activity and they feel good, and then all of a sudden maybe they move the wrong way one day, uh, they could maybe cause, they maybe get some sort of flare-up or some sort of damage and maybe accumulation of those inflammatory markers, or maybe it's that biomechanical pain that they experience. Whatever the case may be, they could, they're could they more susceptible to a flare-up in the future, and that could be maybe just a result of maybe not that full healing occurring. 
or they just have a kind of a weaker area on the spinal disc now as a result of that scar tissue being laid down. So moving on just to this next slide, just to kind of look at a disc extrusion. So with the disc extrusion, we have that herniated nucleus kind of moving outwards. Uh, we may have that neovascularization where we're laying down new blood vessels. We form the scar tissue, form a plug essentially, and that will prevent that nucleus from leaking out. So now just go into some of the research with the research test. We got at Oz T, Vernon Roberts, Moore, and Fraser 92. So what they did was they conducted a study. They looked at 135 lumbar discs, 27 spines removed post-mortem. Average age of these individuals were 31 and a half years old. And so they found concentric tears were found to be the most common in the anterior and posterior portions of the annulus, but 18 concentric tears in posterior L5S1 when compared to only seven anterior L5S1. So we see that there's kind of an even distribution of concentric tears between the L1, L2, L2, L3, L3, L4, and L4, L5, except that the L5S1, which we have a substantially uh, difference, we have a substantial difference between the amount of concentric tears. And so I'll kind of get into maybe why this occurs. And this could be maybe just due to the way the L5S1 disc is positioned and how it kind of takes stress and compression. But we can look at to the uh, radial or radiating tears. They were found to be exclusively found in the posterior annulus. So almost all the radial and radiating tears that individuals had out of these 27 spines were found in the posterior portion of the annulus. So that's kind of at the back of our spinal disc there. And if we look at the rim lesion, our peripheral tears were found to be most common in the anterior disc, except at the L5S1 disc, which was just five posterior to four anterior, so it's almost even still on average. And so if we look at that, just look at um, this diagram, the anterior portion of our spinal disc here, which is where we could see more of those rim lesion tears occurring. And then we have an even distribution of concentric tears between the anterior and posterior, except at the posterior L5S1, with like I mentioned in the previous slide, there were more tears of concentric tears in the L5S1 in those individuals. But just to kind of give you a representation of this slide, what the black arrows are pointing to is the anterior front of the disc. And then at the back would just be where the, the joints essentially are and where the kind of that, if you look at the disc extrusion, where that herniated nucleus is. is. So moving on to some thoughts for causes of each tear. So concentric, uh, this could be a result of twisting. So doing a lot of maybe twisting under load specifically. So we look at hockey, maybe golf, sit-ups with twists, which can contribute to these concentric tears and allowing for those and contributing to the annulus layers kind of splitting apart. So hockey being an example, but we could also look to radial radiating tears. So almost all radial radiating tears, pretty much all of them were found in the posterior annulus. So this could maybe be due to just repeated flexion with or without load. So poor deadlift deadlift technique uh, could be a reason why an individual experienced these uh, radial tears and why they're accumulating specifically in, this, in the uh, posterior annulus. And then if you look at to the rim lesion, peripheral tear, repeated flexion or extension with load, so maybe an overhead press with hyperextension or supermans with weight, or so just some sort of constant extension where we're stressing the kind of anterior portion of the annulus, which can contribute to maybe these tears occurring more commonly in the anterior portion. So with regards to radial tears and rim lesion, with regards to radial tears, they were almost always found, almost all of them are found in the posterior portion of the annulus. And this can be a result of just the way our spine is designed. As we can move through a greater, as we can move through flexion, we can we constantly round our back, maybe when we're tying our shoes. With extension, we're not getting that same degrees of bending. And so that may be why we get uh, more rim lesion tears is just because of the, the the different degrees of ways the ways of our the, the ways that our spine bends with regards to flexion and extension and that's why may some, someone may experience more radial tears uh, with a lot of those rounding their backs with regards to flexion then rim lesion maybe it could be due to it's just a thought is it, it may be just due to extension uh, based on the way our spine bends into extension specifically under load can cause maybe those kind of peripheral tears to occur those rim lesion tears on the anterior portion of the annulus. So that's just some thoughts as to why I believe they may occur. And then wrapping it all up, guys. So mechanical stress is essentially a cause of these annular tears forming. So you, if you're doing setups consistently over time with weight, poor deadlift technique, or you know tying your shoes with poor form, consistently bending over, it's that mechanical stress that's going to eventually cause these tears to occur over time. 
as we can see with just sit-ups with weight here. Some annular tears may cause pain, whereas others may not, which is an important consideration to keep in mind as well. And annular tears, uh, they heal by the formation of scar tissue, but they may never fully heal, or it may take a very long time, which is another important thing to keep in mind. Because uh, essentially these annular tears may not always heal, specifically within the inner portion of our annulus, and that outer portion will get more priority. And so that's it for today's little presentation, guys. I hope you guys enjoy this, and hopefully you, you were able to take something away. If you someone that maybe has an annular tear and doesn't exactly understand what it is or how it may cause pain or how it may affect you. Um, and if so, if you guys enjoyed this, and if you're maybe if you're someone that does have an annular tear or has had previous spinal disc injuries, please leave a comment. I'd love to hear about your story. Please share your story with me. I just, I'd love to hear about it. And also, if this is your first time watching this video, or one of my videos, be sure to subscribe as I'm always posting different tips related to spinal disc injuries. Okay guys, so that's it. I wish you guys all a successful and productive day and take care.